So I passed these out previously, some of these um, forms that have the uh, different conjugation of the verbs on them. So these are extras. Nobody wants to take. Yeah, just see if we, we have a few of them left over. Those are all extra, so I've got my original copies here. I had uh, made some. Okay. How many of you have hands there? Did you get hands there? You get hands there. I'll write it for you. You have, you have it, right, Maureen? You're already Huh? What do you want to write? I'll just write it for you right here. Hands there. The German guy that, you know, <laughs> I guess, like that, how's it? Answer with, yes. Oh, thank you. W-E-H-R. E-H-R. E-H-R. Okay. I mean, I hope I can see him in Jannah, but it appears that he died as a non-Muslim. So, God only knows what is his situation. That's, that's the story? Huh? I'm going to Huh? So, he wrote the whole thing? Yeah. He, 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 did, he basically went through a sahah I mean, he went through uh, Lisan al-Arab. He went through the major giant volumes of Arabic dictionaries. And he picked out a good, you know, very relevant chunk of information. And... Um, put it into a dictionary that's formulated just like the Arabic dictionary, but with English meanings. And so he set it up for anybody to make that transition from someone who knows English and knows some Arabic, they can read the script, they know a little bit, but they're not sure. And then they've learned the basic simple, what we call ishtiqaq, or uh, der der derivations of the words. And so now they can find any word and have a very good reference. So he did all of that just because he wanted to be an Orientalist. He wanted to know the Arabic language and present it to German speakers. And then it was brought to English. Yeah. So he, he did study Islam, you know, all of them. Of course he studied Islam. You can tell because he puts a lot of Islamic legal terms, he says, in Islamic law, this and that means this and this and that. I don't know, the best. maybe he was preparing. Or we don't know, see that's the thing, well, you know, obviously we're here in an Arabic language class, but with regard to Aqidah, there is something called Jaryan uh, Al-Ahkam fi dunya that we have rules about people. If somebody is saying, I'm Muslim, and that's how they die, we have funeral procedures and graveyard issues that we do, and that's what we know. But at the end of the day, do we know if in that person's heart they were a complete Catholic? We don't know. So we don't know that they're going to heaven. We're going to pray for them because that's what we understood and so forth. And the opposite is true. Maybe somebody in their heart or in their mind or right before they died, they embraced Islam and then they ended up labeled whatever and in, you know throughout history and put in whatever graveyard. That doesn't mean anything. God's going to judge the people. That's why we say Maliki or Medin. He is, because it's Maliki and Maliki are both properly uh, recited. So he is the sovereign owner, master, controller, and king of the affairs of the Day of Judgment. We should not put ourselves in a position to say, we know for ourselves and for the rules of our worldly application of religion, we know the rules. But we're not going to make absolute judgments about any soul. We're going to say these type of beliefs and characters and things, 
and worship and lack thereof could lead to this and that according to what the scripture is telling us. Well, uh, John Esposito, did he eat? John Esposito is a, uh, he's an objective orientalist, but he's not a Muslim. So he still did not declare until now? No. Yeah. Now, Karen Armstrong, I, I think she's undercover. I think she's, I very much feel so. I feel that she's for some maslaha. Oh, she's wrote many great books about Islam and religion and comparative religion. She's a great reference. She was a nun, but she left the, the order. She's technically left the Catholic Church. She's a spiritual deist agnostic type. That's the way she presents herself. You know what that means? No. <laughs> Someone that says, I know there's a God, and I know God has been doing something for mankind, but I'm not sure about the exact religion of God. Oh, okay. Yeah. But doesn't agnostic mean that she's not sure about God? Yeah. 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 No, not sure about the existence of God. Yeah, I guess you could say uh, maybe she's not agnostic from that aspect. Yeah. She's a deist, we say. No. A deist. Yeah, it's a more better way to say it. Someone who believes that there's a God. So she's a monotheist. A, she's a monotheist as well. Martin Leakes is Muslim. No, Martin Leakes was a Muslim, but he was a perennialist. That's a whole other. We're getting into stuff, man. We're here for Arabic, man. <laughs> if you're talking about perennialism, man, that's a very complicated situation. Yeah. Anyway, so Arabic, Quranic Arabic. What is the basic of perennialism? I don't, I never heard. It's a, it's a everyone owns true. I mean, to an extent, Islam is a universalist religion, so you can figure it out with the ayahs and hadith. But at the end of the day. Hinduism is not Christianity, is not Judaism, is not Buddhism, is not Islam, right? Those are all separate, completely different things. Perennialism is suggesting they all come from the same source, but they have a little human vibe to them, right? So that that would ruin the need for being a Muslim, which is a big problem, right? Okay, so we're evangelists. We have a mission, and our mission is to understand the Quran and to practice and preach its message, which is what we came here for. Okay, so we stopped last week with Ayatul Kursi. And Ayatul Kursi is the most prominent verse of the Holy Quran because it is defining God in most clear detail so that we can understand who is our Creator. Who is the one that brought us into existence? Who are we responsible to? How do we properly see the exalted, sublime status of Him? Right? Okay. So I think we start with يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Is it? Start with the one that you have to do in the book. Oh. is what we're going to start with today. Yeah, yeah. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ So, we want to have a deep grasp of this. Various Muslims could assert a basic translation. I'm hoping that all Muslims have that, because it's Ayatul Kursi. My personal assessment, no 10-year-old child should not be able to tell you the, the general translation of Ayatul Kursi. They should be able to recite it in Arabic properly, according to Tajwi, and they should be able to tell you what that means if they're not an Arab. Unfortunately, that's not a standard, this practice, but we want to develop that standard. So. Ya'lamu. He has knowledge or he knows. So that is a noun, verb, or an article. All words are either noun, verb, or article. Right. Which is it? This is verb. Verb. Yeah, he knows. Okay. Past, present, or future, or command? Present, I guess. Present. Present, future, past, everything actually. Yeah. He knows, he knows of, so what you're doing right now is a creed. A cradle interpretation, but the literal is a present tense, present tense. verb, mm -hmm. 
That is in which person? First, second, or third? Third, yeah. As in, yeah. yeah as for third. Yeah, third. at the beginning of a verb, right. okay, is third person. And then when we look at the end of it, we don't see una or umna, right? Or any, mm -hmm. right? So what is it? Singular? Singular. singular. So it's singular, masculine, present tense. He knows. He is knowing. Those are two ways of saying this. He knows or he is knowing. Ma. So the root of this is Ain Lam Mim. If you were going to look this word up, everybody, because as we said, mine is now a 13 year old dictionary, okay? Or about 12 years old. So this dictionary is Hans Ver. Can you, uh, let me see this one, just so everybody can see. Hans Ver is a very great scholarly work for any student of knowledge who wants to study Islamic sciences. Okay? Hans Ver, Arabic English Dictionary. Okay? So, if you're looking up the word Ya'lamu, O English student of Arabic, you will not look under Ya, because Ya is an additive which is indicating with the sukun next to it, with a dhamma at the end. This structure is a verb. So, Ya is indicating a third person uh, reality. Okay? And so. Uh, this would be looked under Ain Lam Mim, which is referring to have knowledge, to have information. Okay, the very basic verb form of this root, to have knowledge. Okay, we know it's present tense because a past tense verb will always begin with the first letter of the root or the first letter of the additive to the past tense root. Okay, so now the next word is Ma. Ma has five possible meanings in Arabic. Who knows which one of those it is? Ma is everything. Uh, well, that mm -hmm. was for the huma of the sama Yeah. So everything. In yeah, yeah. Ma here is talking about um, all of which, right? So it's technically it's uh, it's technically um, ma mosula. Is a it's a mosul here. That which. All that which. Mm -hmm. Because ma after it is coming a very general reality, what we'll see here, it is in and of itself general, which is where you'll get all. So you don't have to say kullu ma. You might see that structure somewhere else. You might see somewhere else kullu ma, right? All of that which, right? But that's a whole different linguistic connotation. Ma here is whatever, or which, or is. So he knows that which. Okay. Again, the, the question about the dictionary. So it, I know that the three, three, um, root, three word letter in the roots. Mm -hmm. Three letter roots. We, we can look. But if there is a single word. Yeah, it will be under the singular word. Article. Like ma. Ma will be under ma. Fi will be under fi. Okay. Yeah, it will be, there's no root, so it's just going to be under as it is. Okay. It's going to come exactly in uh, chrono well, not chronological, uh, alphabetical order. Yeah. So then the next word is Baina. Baina. Interestingly, that word, this is an adverb, they call it dharf. This is dharf makan, technically speaking. So it's an adverb which is referring to a place in which something, the knowledge is happening, right? But it comes from a root. Bayanun is a root. It means to clarify, right? It can also mean somewhat to distinguish, like fa'raqaf as well. So it's interesting. If there's something between two things, can you tell them apart? Yes, by nature of there being something between them. So they're not mixed and bled together. So, baina, it means between, right? As an adverb, between. It is a adverb meaning the place in which the verb is happening. Baina. And it comes up a lot in the Quran. This is a very common adverb in the Arabic language, right? Pure Arabic. So, but bayana or bayan, I'm sure you've heard bayan. Yeah, which is, means what? 
speech, speech that has become clear and eloquent, right? Bayan is something that's becoming very... So in the science of Balagha, there's Bayan. In the science of eloquence, there is getting across the point clearly and distinguishing it so that it is something that people can grasp and understand properly, right? So distinguishing is because it's clear of something that's not it. So it's clear speech. So Bayna is something is between something so that they're both clear and opposite, separate from each other, right? Right. So, Al-Qur'an Kitabun Mubin, isn't it? What does Mubin mean? Clear. Clear. Yeah, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. You will know Qur'an from other Qur'an and you will know Qur'an for what it's trying to say because it is very clear in its indication. Right? Now, amongst the clear teachings of the Qur'an is Mutashabihat. And Mutashabihat are generally, we're talking about matters of faith in the unseen. Right? So those things are part of a clear book, which is teaching us as a clear teaching, we are not meant to understand the matters of the unseen. So how could we very exactly clear in understanding about something that it told us very clearly to understand that those things are beyond our perception? You see, it's very interesting how those things in and of themselves are clear about being unclear. I don't know, philosophy, a lot of people don't like it. No, I mean, you're right, because when we die, inshallah, We'll Let's go to heaven and God gives us all the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. We'll be able to understand this clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clear. But for now, he's told us clearly, you're not going to understand it. Yeah. It's, it's beyond you. So that's a clear teaching. Yeah. Yeah, so it's clear. It's that clear that you won't be clear. clear. <laughs> <laughs> Is that cool? All right. Okay, so Baina. So he, he knows that which is between. Okay? A.D. him. How many, how many words is this? No, it's two words, man. Yeah. A-D is a plural. And hum is a uh, word as well. It's also plural. Yeah. So A-D is the plural of yen. Yedun. Hadihi yedun. Hadihi yedun ukhra. Right? What does yedun mean? Hadihi yed. Actually, technically, if we're going to really technically in old Arabic, this is all a yet. Okay? Yeah, but historically, culturally, particularly with an Islamic law that was made about a person who steals a high amount of something valuable at their hand, so it was from the mufsal. So when that rule was made, it became common that this, because this is technically called kef in Arabic. This is kef, right? This is dhira'ah. Dira right here, but the kef and the dira is a yet historically, right? Okay. So id is hands. Hands. What is home? Uh, home is third person. There. There. Very good. There for plural third person, uh, both masculine or masculine and feminine. Okay, together. So their hands, between their hands. So obviously this is not a literal verse. If it is, then it's very strange, you know. So Who how, knows, I've got this pin. Yeah. So how did the meaning change from between their hands to the front of, of, of them? Hey, we'll get there. Let's first understand what we see literally, and then we'll break into the, the, the next phase. So AD is the pearl of Yed. Yed becomes AD. It is not Eid. You hear Arabs that say, Hat <laughs> Eidak. I'm wondering, is there an Eid? Are we celebrating something? What's happening, man? <laughs> yeah, so this is unfortunately, they've changed the language, right? There's no ever any narration or. Yeah. For the record, Sunnis people say Eid. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah. No, you'll find, yeah, yeah. You'll find um, Sudanese, Mauritanian, even Somalian. Uh, but Somali, because their original language is actually a sister tongue of Arabic, historically speaking. Uh, you'll find they, when they talk Arabic, it's a little bit more closer. They may change some letters, like get and yeah. things like that. Someone told me in Mauritania they speak like pure Arab, Arabic. They're poets like, like amongst the them. Quranic Arabic. 
Yeah, because in Mauritania they have a poet society called Sharaqita. They're hafal. They memorize everything. And they, they're very poetic. I lived with a brother named Muhammad Shanqiti in, uh, in Michigan. And he started my interest in the Arabic in a very interesting way. He would, he would like, he's a freestyle, you know, he just, he, he just break it down right there for you. Say some beautiful Arabic, You're like, man, is that a Quran ayah? And he's like, no, 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 I was just telling you this is at this point. <laughs> so on the earth, there's not very many people, but in some places, in some pockets, you will find it, right? I think Hamza used to study from there, right? He studied many places, but a lot in Mauritania. He studied with the Shinaqita. Okay, Yedun and AD. A hand, hands. Okay? Hom is a possessive, connected pronoun. When you connect a pronoun, like Hom, you have E for meaning mine, you have Na for meaning for ours, you have Hu for his, Ha for hers, Homa for theirs, Hom for theirs, plural masculine, Hunna for plural feminine, and so forth. You have ka for yours, ki for yours, female, and so forth and so on. When you add those to a noun, it becomes a possessive pronoun. Their hands, right? Their hands. And the hymn he hymn knows hymn. that which is between their hands. He knows what's going on in here. No, that's the, <laughs> it's not the correct understanding. So literal, the Qur'an is a book with full of metaphors. So with all due respect to our great scholar Ibn Taymiyyah and his deep philosophical uh, analysis of, uh, of things, you know, to say there's no majaz in the Qur'an is there's void. There's no what? There's no metaphor. Like oh, Ibn, metaphor. Ibn Taymiyyah it went really deep, and you're going to have to read multiple books to understand what he's trying to say by his statement, but his statement is very not face value uh, acceptable. That there is no metaphors in the Quran. The Quran is full of metaphors. It's a beautiful Arabic. Yeah. yeah. But if you read ten books, you'll understand this statement. But we're saying, Ya Shaykh, Rahmatullah alayk al wasi'ah. Why are you telling us that statement? The common folk are going to misunderstand what you're saying, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll confuse a lot of people. Yeah. So that's where he would. That's Imam al Dhahabi said about him. Imam al Dhahabi in his book, Sidi al Alam ibn Nubula, when he talked about all the great scholars and some of the narrators of hadith like we were talking about last time, he said, Ibn Taymiyyah huwa shaykh al Islam. Ilmuhu bishara akbar min aqlihi. His knowledge of Islamic law is so big and so natural to him that it over outweighs his logical, his, his self human ability to relate to people. So like when you talk to him about anything that has any impact of religion, he's going to talk very deeply from a very deep, you know, and you're, you're, the average Muslim is not there. Yeah. He wasn't able to dumb it down, as they say. He wasn't from there. You know, like Sheikh Sha'arawi, he was a master at dumbing down to where people could have a deep, deep Connect spiritual relationship. With, yeah, to, with... He was on his own levels. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why some people try to accuse him of stuff that's not fair. Okay, AD him. What? This is wa al yeah. Just simply is. And. and yeah, and. It is a. What do you call that? Conjunction. Conjunction. Yeah. This is connecting that this and this is all under what he knows, right? Ma is the same as here. Ma bain AD him wa ma khalfahum. And all that is what I How many words? Two words. Two. two words. This is a adverb. Just like Baina Khalfa. Khalfa Amama. So Khalfa is here, Amama is here. Okay? Home. So, do you all know why it says home here in him? Yeah, I was going to ask you that. That's just for the linguistic thing, right? Because him goes... Fluent. Yeah, the Arabs have a tongue, and that is their language. And they owned it since they developed it some 1800 years ago thoroughly. It became separate from Aramaic and Akkadian and those other languages. Okay, so... They decided that the word is home. It is a connective pronoun that brings possession. 
to a noun whenever it's added to it. So, but they said to say a d hum, they felt had a thiqil ala lisan. They said this is heavy. So the Arabs decided it's him. You just give it like, like it's being affected by the adverb or the prepositional phrase, which after all adverbs and prepositional phrase, the word that's singular is going to get kasra. Right here. Like if I said, fi baytina, in our house. Uh, ma'ar rajuli, with the, with the man. Right? So these are prepositional phrases. You see that kasra at the end is because you have a, a noun that is the object of the preposition coming after the prepositional phrase. Kasra is always there. So they said, here it's good. Bayna aidihim. They said, we like that. Arabs, they felt that way long before the Quran. They said, we feel that sounds right. That's their language. Why? I don't know. That's them. They're Arabs, right? So, A.D. whom? They said that. We don't like the way that there's no transition. It doesn't feel right. And there's a whole... This is called Ilm al-Aswat wa Ilm al-Imla. There's knowledge of how the Arabic voice box works. And that is a specific reality. Separate from the German or the Spanish voice box, which has its own specific things. Okay? Or the very bland English uh, voice box. Right? So they, they have certain rules they made in writing Arabic and in saying Arabic. Okay? So, Khalfahum behind them. Right? Behind them. Okay, so what does this verse mean? Ya'lamu, with regard to God, by now we're talking creed, any verb attributed to God is based in an absolute characteristic that is constant in him of the utmost perfection without flaw or defect. So that's something we understand from the whole Qur'an, that anything he does or says is perfect and absolute and constant. It does not change, it doesn't get low, it doesn't get high, it doesn't change its mind, it doesn't become different. It's always as it is, eternally speaking. Okay? So he knows. So we could just say, Ya'lamu, because we're Muslims and we know, but the Qur'an is a book of da'wah to people who don't know, right? So I get into this argument, as you know, before, when people are saying, you know, uh, uh, for those scholars that postulated that Allah is like a personal name of God, and that's what it says in the Quran, so let's say that. No, we're trying to get people who don't know that, they don't, they've not embraced Arabic as the language of the final revelation of God. So why are you going to start from there? You start with something that they know, that you can talk to them. So these are words that any Arab in the time of the Prophet would literally, oh, so that's who for them was Allah, right? So, Ya'lamu, he is knowing all that is which. Because if you say, Bayna Aidihim, so historically in Arabic, when you say Bayna Aidihim, literally it means in between their hands. But what it means is something that will happen to them, right? So right now, Bayna AD in, 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 in my reality is a class that I'm teaching you. But Bayna AD is also me driving home. It's also me talking to my kids and playing with them and eating and, you know, reading some Quran, having family circle, watching the NBA Finals game or whatever else that's going to go on, right? That's being the AD right now. That's what's going to happen with me, right? Ma khalfi is the fact that we just had the dars on the hadith sciences and we had uh, some people come in earlier and everybody has their reality, right? Okay, so... This statement historically in Arabic before the Qur'an was a known phrase that has a metaphorical meaning. It means what happened before and what happens after. Before, now, and after is the meaning. So the best translation for this is going to be, He knows all. God's omniscience is absolute in that He knows everything uh, past, present, and future. That's what this really means. God knows all of, of everything, past, present, and future. That's the correct translation of this from a comprehensive, linguistic, theological um, knowledge of English and Arabic translation. Unfortunately, you're not going to get that because some people feel very responsible to the letter of the Qur'an in Arabic. And then they say something that's a phrase, that's a translation of an Arabic phrase that's common and has a certain metaphorical meaning in Arabic. But in English, it doesn't necessarily get that whole point across. 
Whereas if you said God knows everything past, present, and future, nobody will ever question that does God know what's going to happen in the future. Like many people when they become Muslim or some youth growing up in a non-Muslim country and they hear these things about the freedom of you know, pure absolute freedom of human action that's not under any sort of oversight or whatever of God, then they start questioning things. If this translation was given to them clearly and they memorized and learned it as a small kid, when somebody said that, they say, no, what I'm sure about is that the revelation that came from the man that did miracles, that proved himself, says that this is what it is. Not me and my opinion or my family's interpretation. This is clear cut or end, right? Yeah. So that is the meaning of this verse. Any questions about this part of the verse? So when I say when, between their hands, does that refer to just human actions? Like what? Sh- What's going to happen to people? Yeah. Forward, yeah, it? because him and him is referring to people. Right. Because here's an interesting thing: most people have agreed historically, philosophically, that believe in God that He knows the amount of leaves on the tree right. and when they're going to fall and all of that. The issue has always been is God within Muslim scholars. The Mu'tazila postulated that God does not know what we're going to do. He knows our intentions, and so a millisecond before we do it, He can do something with His power to influence that if He so chooses. That's the Mu'tazila position, historically, because of some philosophical Greek, Greek thought-influenced idea about the reality of will and human free will and all of that, right? So no, the Quran and the Sunnah is very clear that 50,000 before years, and this is also a metaphor, before anything was actually put into play through evolution and whatever else, um, the reality of God's knowledge was absolute as to whatever will happen to that. Now, does he influence it? No. He influences it to an extent that doesn't affect good deeds or bad deeds as personal choices, which is what we, 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 we own them based on intention, right? So those things are ours. He's, he has a plan, if you will, quote-unquote, um, but he does not make us do what we do, and he does not change what we do and then judge us based upon something he puppeteered us to do. No. We get judged based upon our intentions and what happens as a result if we, if he so chooses to allow that to happen. Right? So, um, it keeps saying, because people have always been in taking issue with the actions of people and how much do they own and how much are we... Because the problem is with human arrogance, as was Satan before, is we get to this point where we think we should have the absolute knowledge and God's revelation becomes absolute, obsolete at this point, right? Because now we think our knowledge can supersede, our intellect can supersede the... The revelation, which is what happened when God revealed by clear words, bowed down to Adam, and Iblis said, no, I will not do that, because I think, and I think, and I think. Right? That's the basis of the problem here. So with regarding to God's knowledge as it regards to human free will, he's saying he knows everything about them, past, present, and future. You see? Okie doke. Well... ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء. This is, this is correct. This is the next part. Let's use a different color. What happens on this board is one color starts to go out. This is Ibn al-Imla. Probably one of the most confusing things in the knowledge of of, of filling in, uh, of writing Arabic is the Hamza after the first one.
We're getting this on the tape, man. How long is this too far over there? Alright, should be okay. Okay. So I got I got my tape get up skills. Everybody got that? Okay, what? Now, this is an interesting point. This what happens to be technically um, something different from uh, the wow that's very common in Arabic. So there's many different kinds of wow. This one here could be wow tafsiriya. Yeah. But uh, which means it's a it's an addition to something to explain something said before. Right? Therefore, sir. Mm, something like that. Anyways, here it could also be istitnaf, which is the common wow that you have. Istitnaf means you're starting a whole new sentence. So as you know, in Arabic, as you know in English, uh, starting a sentence with end is a run-on. This is a bad grammar. So you can tell the level of tar uh, translation capability of your Qur'an translation when you notice that you keep seeing end put at the beginning of all the ayahs because and is bad English and you're trying to present something as good quality English translation which is not, right? So we would just throw that out in English whereas in Arabic it's relevant as a natural way to start a sentence, right? So um, while well, here could be seen as explaining the one before or it could be seen as just saying a whole new thing that's kind of related as any structured statement or paragraph would be. So, wala. La means what? No. Yeah. Um, here it means doesn't. Doesn't. Because it's connected to a verb. Right? It's connected to a verb. Um, but la is a, negation, is a negator. That's the best way to say la. Because la has different. There's la nafi al jins. There's la al nahi. There's la al. Uh, jawab, yani normal, just to answer somebody as a full complete stop, you know. Um, so here is negating a present tense verb. Negating a present tense verb. So when you're saying a present tense verb, if you said, I'm talking. So if you want to say, I'm not talking, right, uh, then you would just put la. La atahaddath. لا أتكلم. I'm not talking, right? So لا يحيطون, right? So that's not mean. That means don't. Yeah. Because you have yeah, which tells you what, as we learned from the last one. It is a present tense of a third person. Third person, right? Present tense, third person. Yeah, at the beginning, and but see, you see, you hit the last one. We saw yeah, lemu. So the last one was the basic يَعْلَمُ يَخْرُجُ يَجْلِسُ يَشْرَبُ يَأْكُلُ You see that structure of the first verb uh, with just the three the three original letters of the root and then you put this ya there to it, uh, indicate that it is a present tense verb. Okay? So here you say he. This is because the the original word is actually, it's actually, I think it's ha ya ta. We can know real quickly by looking at hands where is it ya or is it wa? Well? Um, wa in the middle. Ha wa ya. It is. It's ha wa ta, isn't it? Ha-wa-ta. 
Yep. So as I started with, never doubt your original. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's the original one. How about to guard, to protect, to watch? Right? To guard, to protect. Okay? So look. You would say, Yahoto. Yahoto. Ihata is to encompass, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you're, you're jumping the gun. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Yahoto. Since you have a wow here, it's going to have instead of on the first one, second That just means to guard, to watch, to take care of. Yahoto, right? But we're doing yuhito, which comes from ahata. Hata is the fourth form of it, which means to surround or to encompass. To surround or to encompass. To enclose, to embrace, to comprise, to contain, to encircle, from, to enclose from all sides, to grasp completely, to understand fully. Here's the best translation to fully understand or to grasp, right? Meaning from an intellectual surrounding, right? So if there's a hole in your knowledge, lam tuhit al you know, this is the end, I think, of Surah Al Talaq. God is completely surrounding everything by knowledge. Right? So, Ahata becomes in the present, that's past tense. Past tense, Ahata, Yuhitu. Becomes present tense. Okey so this means to encompass, and it's really talking about knowledge as we will see. So yuhaytu is he encompasses. Here we have yuhaytuna. What does this wow and noon mean? Yeah. They don't encompass. They have they do not fully grasp. Right? They do not encompass or encircle. So the una is referring to the ya as in they, instead of he is they. I, I don't know when you said it's So if you don't have una, it's he. Right. It's, it's singular. You put una, plural, masculine, plural, masculine, uh, yeah, on the third person. This is first, second, third person. Right. You would know from this. This is what you're going to, and present tense is what that obviously is right. indicating as well. So then you know this is plural. Like muslimuna. Right. It's the same in nouns as it is in verbs. It no, means plural. What I, what's confusing me is that una should make the yuhid plural instead of they. Well, you can't make a verb plural. So. What are you talking about, brother? Sorry. <laughs> we got philosophical and the brother brought the fifth dimension. <laughs> That's the IT mind working there. Okay. What are you And they do not encompass or uh, encircle. Bishayin. Bishayin. So what is this? Is this? How many words is this? I think three. No, two words. Two words. B, shay. B is a uh, prepositional phrase, harf jar, that is usually, usually, it's indicating aliyah, a tool by which something is done. Aktubu bil qalb, I'm writing with a pen, right? So, bismillah, with the honor and greatness of God, with all of his qualities and characteristics, right? So, B, shay, 
right? It's the tool by which something is done. But here, it's referring to an exaggerated, because you could say, لا يحيطون شيئا من علمي. In Arabic, it could be said like that. That's fine. They do not encompass or grasp um, something of his knowledge. Shayan means something. Shayan something, right? Something. But be shayin anything. Not a bit of it. Be shayin, not even with the slightest bit. This is indicating yani, tahqir for the human's reality of knowledge about God. Right? Like, what we know about him, what we know about everything, we don't know nothing. We haven't grasped the وَمَا أُتِيتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You are not given knowledge except for a little bit. Right? Warning the person. There's many great philosophers and thinkers and modern technological scientists and thinkers. Don't allow them to become your prophets. They know nothing. Till the day of judgment they have learned nothing. Right? Because you hayduna is talking about who? All of mankind for its whole history. The whole reality of humankind is being spoken about here. Not in the time of the Prophet. Anybody. Ever. Okay? They do not encompass anything. Not something from his knowledge, but anything. What's the, the Hamza? The, uh, this is part of the word. Shay. Shay. Yeah, there you go. So this is. So, you get confused. Does it go here on the ya yeah, or is it on the line next to it? And so that's just part of the science of uh, Hamza that I'm probably... Any scholar that doesn't write all day every day and read all day every day Arabic, um, even maybe some of those might have a problem with some of these rules about Hamza. Yeah. yeah. So how does a B make it anything from something to anything? Because B is saying... It's the flow of Arabic. Like for example... I think of an example. Like in this case, you said B means with using the tool or yeah, yeah, yeah. the tool, right? But that's not what it means here. Oh, that's not what That's it what means. I said to you. It generally means. Okay. Yeah. So it generally means it's talking about a tool. But B and Min, these two articles, mm -hmm. can be used. Some scholars said Ziyada. I don't like that opinion because you can't say there's something Ziyada in the book of God. Mm -hmm. You can say there's some extra thing that has no value or purpose in the Holy Quran. No. That's, I like, Imam al Tabari said, that's ideas marfud, the asli. This is originally and absolutely rejected by its nature. Because you're, say, you're saying something against God. You're now bringing weakness to his book by your interpretation. The other one is to say it's giving an exaggerated mubalagha fil alaqa bayna al fi'l wal maf'ul. Right? It's giving you a ziyada. Min shay, bi shay. This means none, none of it. Not even the slightest bit of it. Not you have. So, like, if you want to go back to the tool argument, so there's not even the slightest bit of the means to know anything except for what. Not just can you know it, but the means to coming to know it without His will is not even mutahalak. It's not even there a possibility for you, right? So it's exaggerating our weakness of knowledge in front of His absolute. Omniscience. Min. Ilmihi. From amongst. That's the prepositional phrase. It's an article. Okay. Among or from. Okay. Ilmihi. Two words. Ha and ilm. Ilm. Knowledge. Ha. His. It's a pronoun. Singular. Masculine. Third person. His. Referring to his knowledge. So the scholars have two different angles on this. So his knowledge about what he knows or uh, knowing him, right? You, you can't know him except for what he allows you to know, right? And you can't know anything that he knows unless he allows you to know it, right? Illa. Exception. This is an article. It's telling you whatever was just said, there's an exception to that rule. It's tithnet. Is to, net, to accept, to make an exception to a general reality. So what it's saying here, we don't know diddly squat, as we say in English. You ever heard that one? 
<laughs> we don't know nothing. Zip, zilch, goose egg, nothing. Okay? So, illa, and this is the only reality that we know. Bima sha, according to his will, by the tool of his will, if you will. Oh, so the bima here means. is meaning by the means. Yeah. And ma is. Bima, so ma, ma, ma. These are two words. Yeah. Prepositional phrase and what is it, whatever. The ism mosul, that which he wills. So this is a verb. Sha'a. We say in Allah. Many people don't realize that that's three words. <laughs> Many people think it's inshallah. inshallah. It's one word. <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> Bima sha'a. It means. And you could even make the argument that this bat and this bat are the same thing. It's just telling you that the preciseness of your knowledge is with the preciseness of what he allows. Right? Yes? So that, that's referring to knowledge about him and his knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Both. So this one, the 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 ta'wil al aqrab. The, the most closest is what he knows, his knowledge. But it could be uh, meant knowledge about him, which is partly his knowledge because that's something about him, right? right. Like, عنه, علمه عنه, right? So, because this is an important part of tafsir from an aqidah standpoint. Because some people want to figure out about God from their mind, or they want to explain him from their mind. Well, God can't be like this because you know God's perfect, and that's what I deem as perfect. Who are you to deem that anything is perfect? What, what are, well, because I'm interpreting that the revelation should possibly mean this. I say, no, no, hold on. Whatever he has said, I'm just going to accept it. Our mind has no influence over unseen matters that are beyond us. Yeah. Okay. If we go to the next one, it's the next one's very what I what say I could see you. This one's gonna take a whole class, maybe. We need to pray uh, also, I believe. So, is there any questions about this? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it should be inshallah. Start to grasp the structures as we go through. it. Alhamdulillah, you have a, some people have a ballpark meaning, some people memorize some, you know, basic ideas. But what we want to get is a comprehensive, so that when another ayah that's not so common comes up, has words like yuhituna or ahata or min or bishayin or in, and you'll start to figure it out. Right. You'll start to see. Right? Yeah, Go ahead. You just pointed out the Bima Shah and Inshallah. That's the Shah is his will. Same, yeah. So, yeah. In yeah. is the is the conditional. This is a conditional article. In Sha'a, he wills. Allah is the doer of the verb Sha'a. So if he wills. So in English we say God willing. Subhanak Allah, bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa